Back at it again, back at it again. Come on now, baby, you got that truck that's gonna take up all the space? Some people get in here before I start raving and ranting. I wanted to jump back on here because uh what was his name double g double g or something i guess he's a drake may fan and he was trying to say it was because of their defense turn around slowly johnny so <laughs> but yeah double g he got mad because i guess he's a drake may fan and uh he didn't like what I was saying about Drake May. Now, I've, from what I said on that video I made earlier, this isn't, what I was saying isn't to say that Drake May and Caleb Williams and uh, Bo Nix and Michael Penix, all of them dudes, that's not to say that any of those dudes won't be good in the NFL. I'm speaking on the, the NFL evaluation the evaluation process. They're gonna pick you apart. So if, if honestly, when the, the way they're evaluating this, it's gonna you're gonna find more things to nitpick in those dudes because they had more games where it was on them because the offense was based around them. So it's gonna be more to nitpick. But as far as he was saying with Drake May, he's trying to say, uh, what was he trying to say? Oh, well, the game where he pl played bad, it wasn't his fault. See, that, that right there. It wasn't It wasn't all his fault. That right there let, just tells me enough right there. Anybody that played football, don't nobody want to hear about, it ain't my fault. Nobody, no coach, no scout, nobody wants to hear, it, it wasn't my fault. And that's how I'm evaluating them. I want to hear about, it ain't your fault. It, it ain't his fault. I look up, I looked up, uh, I looked up because I can take some of them other losses and shootouts, but the real thing is, what do you do in that big game against that big time competition? North Carolina schedule, NC State, what did he give them? I think he had 250, 250, and Two picks, two picks and two touchdowns. And then Clemson, 200 yards, 200 yards, a pick and a TD. That ain't enough. That's the big time games. So those are the games that really mean the most to me. So I'm knocking you. I don't want to hear, well, Clemson's just better than them. Yeah, that's another thing he said. Well, Clemson's just got a better team. I don't want to hear that. You're supposed to be Drake May. Right? So that's how I'm evaluate. I evaluate dudes like I'm a, like I'm in the scouts. I'm going to pick you apart. I'm hard on our players. I just it's hard to you it's hard to be hard on JJ. You can't be hard on him when the coach told him to hand the ball off. <laughs> it's hard to be hard on JJ for that. But even when uh in the playoff when JJ was having some little struggles or whatever, I was hard on him in some of them games. But we talking about NFL evaluation. College is over. So I'm just telling you how the scouts are because somebody asked me why is JJ shooting up the board draft boards and, and that's why. JJ has everything and it's less to pick apart from him didn't have as many reps 
didn't have all those reps after reps after reps, game after game, 40 and 50 pass attempts. Starting, starting as a freshman, throwing it 40 times, four, almost 40 times a game for three years. It's a difference. But I'm gonna look at I'm looking at what you're doing in them big time games. The offense on you, North Carolina versus Clemson. This is the big time win. This is the ACC. Who's been running the ACC? Clemson. That's just like that's just like if 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 we judge in JJ and he never beats he never beats Ohio State. That's a stain on him. You know what I'm saying? That's a stain. Now, I know somebody's gonna say, "Well, C.J. Stroud, C.J. Stroud, a little bit different." We we all knew C.J. was slick a beast. You know what I'm saying? We all knew he was slick a beast. But this dude, uh, Drake May, you know, and that's not to say that Drake ain't good. I'm just picking him apart like a scout would. You know, so that's just that's just how I think about this stuff. I break I. I I, I look at it different. Like he posted a bunch of Drake May stats. Them stats stats don't mean all that much. I mean they do mean something. Now if you just shredding everybody, Joe Burrow, that means something to me. Now if you shredding everybody, that means something to me. But if you shredding all these mediocre, all these bad teams, and then when you play NC State with a defense, struggle bus. When you play Clemson with a good defense, struggle bus. College, the big time wins are us, especially at a college like UNC. Them big time games is for real. That's where it's at. Like you need that big time win. So, and this is, like I said, this ain't to say he won't be a good pro. I'm just going off of draft scouts type thinking type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Dude can make every throw. But what you gonna do when it, when it, you going up against that that big time team with that good defense that's been running the conference? But hey, I might just be hating. <laughs> I might just be hating. Let me see what y'all talking about. They want to skip over the games that he hit, lit it up, and want to focus on the few incompletions. We can even say we can send stuff that they not, ain't even running. Yep. Yeah, JJ, 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 JJ is a baller. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't say he's a great quarterback because we haven't seen him just be a great quarterback. JJ is just a, a baller. He's somebody you you you'll you'll take in the battle with you because you know he's gonna fight and do whatever he has to do to win. You know what I'm saying? So besides the the other intangible stuff that he has, you know what I'm saying? You just know he's a baller. He's gonna give you everything he's got. Whatever you ask him to do, he's it's no problem for him. You know, dude just had a problem with me picking apart Drake May. I guess he's a Drake May fan, you know what I'm saying? But that, that's not to say that Drake won't be a good pro. I'm just picking him apart and saying why J.J. is moving up to where some people are saying he may go before Drake may. You know what I'm saying? That's all I was really talking about. But then, hey, that's the thing. To me, all these dudes can be picked apart in some type of way. If, if okay, J.J., you, I'll pick apart J.J. for you. Gunslinger, gunslinger, possibly, possibly could be injury prone. Cause when JJ took a few, took a hit, he would be, he would get hurt. Can he, can he handle the, the, the being a full time NFL starter and stay healthy? The other, other thing, we don't know how good he can be because we haven't seen him really have to take over games with his arm. You know? So, hey, that's JJ. 
but with the reps, teams don't really look at that as a knock. They just look at it like, okay, that means I can, I still can coach this. There's a lot of coaching I can do for this kid. You know, they don't really look at that as a knock against him. You know, that's why he's rising, obviously, because him not him not throwing it a ton. They don't look at it as a look at it that as even a knock. So. But it is what it is. We'll we'll find out where these dudes go. <laughs> I told my boy that JJ's been. He's a, he's my 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 boy's actually a North Carolina fan, and I I watch a lot. I actually watch a lot of their games just so I can talk stuff to him when they lose. And he couldn't believe it. JJ's ain't no way he going before Drake May. I'm like, okay, he might. No, nah, I bet, bet. He always want to bet, bet. I'm like, all right, we gonna see. We gonna see, but yeah, you know, that's just how I look at things with these quarterbacks and stuff. The biggest thing to me though, I don't like to, I don't like to take a whole season of work because a lot of that season is against boo boo teams. You know what I'm saying? I like to pick out the teams where it's gonna, where it's difficult for him. Where they have a good, if we're talking about quarterbacks, they have, they have a good secondary, a good defense. You know, same if we were talking about a wide receiver, they have good corners and safeties. That's when I want to get the. How did he do against these guys? Going against them boo boo teams and stuff, I, I don't really care too much how a player does. You know what I'm saying? Of course, we want them, don't want them to play bad, but. I really want to see how you do against the cream of the crop. When the pressure is on you, when the lights is bright, when the lights is the brightest, what do you do? When the lights is bright, is you gonna is you gonna tense up or are you gonna have a calming presence? Are you gonna find a way to get that win? Are you gonna find a way to win? You gonna find a way to win with your arm or find a way to win with your legs? I don't care how you do it. I just want the win. So that's why I knock him. Speaking of Drake May. Because I need you to get that NC State win. That's an in-state rivalry. I need that win. Clemson been running the, the, the ACC for who knows how long now. 10 years or something. I need that win. Top 10 pick. I need that win. You know what I'm saying? So that's come on, bro. Give me a truck up. Idiot. But yeah, I need that win against against them. You know what I'm saying? That's what matters. But it's gonna be interesting to see where all of these dudes go, honestly. Drake May, Caleb, Michael Penix, JJ, Bo Nix. It's gonna be interesting to see where all of them dudes go. You know, and who actually rises to the top? Who who may who may get the chance to just sit sit the bench and get to learn, or who get and who gets thrown out there to the to the wolves? And you know, hey, we seeing it with Justin. What happened with Justin Fields? You get thrown out there to the wolves. You ain't got a good offensive line. One year of a garbage offensive line in the NFL, and you might not ever recover mentally from it. Mentally, you might not recover from it. So where you you just you missing reads, you can't think, you can't sit in the pocket because you're scared you're gonna get your head knocked in. You know what I'm saying? So I'm interested to see where these dudes go and interested to see uh who gets thrown to the wolves and who rises to the top like like CJ Stroud did this year. You know what I'm saying? Till you, you know. Had a good year, but who, you know, who goes to somebody with a garbage offensive line and they running for their life, and who gets to sit and learn and maybe de and develop, you know? Honestly, being a being a lower round pick as one of those quarterbacks and getting to sit and learn and develop even more, that's the that's the best bet. Yeah, you're not gonna get as much money, but. 
it's probably better for your long term NFL career is to get and sit and learn and maybe develop for a year which that don't guarantee you're going to be good but it would be nice you know just cuz you I mean just cuz you sit and develop that don't mean you're going to be good but hey if, if you sit and develop and you still ain't good by then well NFL just might not be for you maybe you should just be a, a backup hell NFL backup that's probably the best career in the in the country that's the best career in the country to me at least NFL backup because you don't get the expectations if you come in and you're bad what do you expect I'm the backup if you come in and you're good everybody loves you and then you'll have some some crazy team give you a max contract because <laughs> you played because you balled out when you came in for like three four games and they'll throw the, throw the bag right at you. And then you go back to being boo-boo. And everybody, oh, that's why he was on the bench. Yeah. That's why he was on the bench. So, yeah, you know, hey. Being a career backup ain't, a, ain't, ain't, ain't bad. Beat, it beat the hell out of work in a regular job, that's for sure. That's for sure. But yeah, uh, what else? What else? I really just wanted to touch on that because he was mad. He was heated. That boy wrote a long little, wrote a wrote a long little comment about Drake May. And you don't watch him. Yeah, I watch him. I'm not saying he wasn't good, a good player. I'm saying I need you to show up in the biggest games. NFL teams are gonna knock you for that because they know 75% of your schedule is trash, Rucko. They're, they know that. So when you play the good teams, that's the biggest time to show up in college. Because most of your schedule is garbage. But yeah, what else? Spring practice. So I was listening to Donovan. Uh, I actually saw a longer, a longer uh, interview with him. It was good to hear from him. Sounds a little more uh, grounded this year than last year, which is nice because he needs to be that leader. You know, you know, Blake, a dude like, let's say Blake, Blake didn't talk that much, you know, besides I'm coming back and we're, I'm coming back to win a championship. That's the goal, you know, but Blake really didn't talk that much. He was more of a on the field, just, just watch, just watch, you know what I'm saying? Blake. Blake just had a smile and a watch this, you know, type of attitude. And I'm just follow my lead in the in the in the in the weight room and all of that. Follow my lead. You know, he was that kind of guy. And that's what you need. Because you need to be stable and grounded for the ups and the downs. You know what I'm saying? The ups and the downs of a game, uh, the ups and the downs of a season. You know, so Donovan needs to be grounded because he's the veteran now on offense that has been there and done that. He's the dude, you know. Other dudes, all the quarterbacks, none of them have played that much. Regardless, if it's one of the guys on the team now, none of them have played that much, you know. So the leaders of the offense really got to be like Colston Loveland, Loveland, Donovan, a dude like Khalil Mullins who's been there for a long time, saw us when we were, weren't that good. They got to be the leaders. You know what I'm saying? And keep dudes grounded on because they know how hard it was. And they know what it takes. You know what I'm saying? So they, Donovan's leadership role has to be big this year. Same way every, every time something went bad. Hand that, hand that thing to Blake. It's going bad. Hand it to Blake. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going bad. Just shut up and hand it to Blake. Hand it to <laughs> hand it to number two. Yeah, I know, I know. We got to make something happen. I got you. Hand that thing to number two. You know what I'm saying? So, I think Donovan 
take that step in leadership and work on your game. Hey, this is the time to work on your holes, but still be you, still be you. But you know, you gotta take on that leadership because on offense, they need you to. The defense is full of uh, dudes that's been there, done that with, with leadership, you know? So it's big on Doc. It's big on Donovan to take that leadership role up. You know what I'm saying? Donovan has to, uh, oh, I ain't even see police coming up. Y'all ain't said nothing. <laughs> I didn't see the, the truck in front of him. He didn't see him either. I ain't see him. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be big for Donovan to take that leadership role on offense because you know they. We lost a ton of leadership on offense from, I mean, we know the dudes we lost. Blake, Blake, Zinner, Keegan, and all the dudes. Henderson, all those offensive linemen, Trente. Those dudes been around, that's leadership. Roman, Cornelius, that's leadership. You know, so it's going to be big. Donovan's got a, he's got a, a lot on his plate for this one. I, I, at least I believe, you know, maybe Khalil Mullins can help him take some of that pressure, but he's got, he's he, he gonna have a lot on his plate because a lot of that offensive leadership, it's gonna be on his shoulders. You that dude that's been around and it's your time. You, this your time. You got, you got humbled a little bit last year. So, hey, the smart thing was to come back. Now it's your time. Be that dude. Be that dude. Be that dude you talked about in the offseason last year. Be that dude. But this year, don't talk about it. This year, don't talk about it. Just be. Just do it. Just be him. You ain't got to say it. We're going to see it on the field. You ain't got to say it. We're going to see it on the field. You know, so that's the that's that's gonna be the big thing. So regardless, I'm looking for Donovan and Loveland to really, you know, take a lot of pressure off whoever that quarterback is. You know, we're gonna need them. They're gonna have to be consistent. Especially well both of them. I can't even say which one of them more, but both of them. Both of them gonna have a lot of pressure to take take that leadership and take some of that pressure off on on that quarterback loveland needs you to be the security blanket donovan takes some pressure off with that run game so if we do need him to just be a game manager hey you got it and i mean that ain't all on donovan that's offensive line gotta back him up too but you get what i'm saying because donovan last year his vision it was yeah <laughs> yeah. I don't know what was happening with his vision, but hey, the thing is, it's the off season. Now's the time to get better. Everybody's got the opportunity to get better. Everybody. What they doing, fishing over here? But yeah, everybody's got the opportunity to get better. Everybody. I wish we could watch a lot of these practices. That's what bothers me. I wish we could watch this stuff. You know, something. Watch these quarterbacks go through the drills and stuff and all this. Because, you know, I get tired of this second hand. This second hand uh, observations. I, I want to observe dudes myself. I know somebody like, who you think you is? <laughs> who you think you is? You think you get to, uh, you supposed to be in practice observing. Uh, uh, I want to observe these dudes myself. I trust my own opinion more than a lot of these people. So, hey, I want to see, I want to see, evaluate them in practice for myself. You know? Uh, who else? What else going on? Uh, Ohio State's pro day. I guess Marvin Harrison Jr. didn't uh, didn't uh, participate. 
he ain't got nothing to prove. He, I mean, honestly, he ain't got nothing to prove. He's kind of, he's kind of zeroed in at the, at the, at the number one receiver. So he ain't got nothing to prove. I don't blame him. You don't want to, you don't want to end up like David Ojabo and get hurt at the pro day. He ain't got nothing to prove. So I get it. You know, all he can do at this point is get hurt or, or hurt his draft stock somehow. He ain't. He really ain't got nothing to prove. Uh, I'm not sure when Michigan's pro day is. I really ain't heard nothing about it. I really ain't heard nothing about it. Um, I was watching. Uh, what I was, I was watching an interview with Hawk. Not Harbaugh. But uh, a Roman Wilson interview on some little podcast. I don't know what it was. It, it just popped up. And they, he was basically, they were just talking about, uh, you know, everything that happened. And, you know, he was talking about how Harbaugh made him kind of believe. And just, you know, in the 2022 playoff, he was hurt. And Harbaugh was like, if you want to play, you can play. You know, if you feel like you can play, go play. And he was just like saying, how that just made him see like, you know, Harbaugh just, hey, if you can feel like you can make a difference and help the team, get out there and help them, you know? And how much he, also how much he he hates Ohio State, you know, from, <laughs> he just wanted to show him up, how much he hated them, all that type of stuff. It's a pretty good interview. I'm not sure what the podcast was called. And they were also giving him credit because he said, uh, his the 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 Rose Bowl was bigger to the, than the national championship to him because he didn't really do much in the in the national championship and the run game was balling so you know they didn't really have to do much but he made some big time plays in that Rose Bowl besides him uh, that block in the back was, boy that had me terrified I thought I thought that negated the play at first I was like oh my god. Like, is this happening? But, you know, it was spot of the foul. First down already get, happened. But, yeah. But he, he balled out in that. He, in that Rose Bowl, he made some plays. He made some big-time plays in that Rose Bowl. You know what I'm saying? And I think people kind of knock him. It's like our receivers and our, well, JJR's receivers, they don't get the credit that they deserve. I mean, it ain't like they had uh, gaudy numbers or uh, a lot of chances, you know what I'm saying? But, like, even Cornelius, I think if Cornelius gets in the right team, a team that gives him a chance, and, you know, we got certain teams that like Michigan players, whether it's uh, New England, I think Philly, I think Philly, uh, Baltimore, of course. We'll see Harbaugh might draft some Michigan dudes. You know, you got certain teams that draft Michigan players. Cincinnati, Detroit, you know. So if if he gets if Cornelius really gets a chance to shine, I wouldn't be surprised if he has a dec a pretty good or decent NFL career. You know what I'm saying? He's got all the tools. We saw at pro I mean at, at the combine he ran a 4-4. Which I know people didn't think he was gonna run that fast, but yeah, I knew he could. I knew he could run. But yeah, so they don't get the credit that. I guess if you didn't really watch them, if you're not a Michigan fan, you don't really know what they can do. You might watch a game and you, they only got a couple catches. So I, I guess I get that, you know. You know, I've watched every Michigan game going back how many years, so I know the ins and outs of these receivers and pretty much everybody, so I get it. Only dudes that get hyped up on, on our offense is the tight ends for the most part. We've put tight ends, whether that's McQueen and uh, McEwen or, you know, the, our tight ends, we're always sending the tight end to the league. Always sending a tight end to the league. Oh my God, this Tampa traffic, y'all, man. 
you in a you in a bigger city, boy. This traffic is a headache. You talking about a headache? I'm about to get off this e-way and park for a second. I can see y'all comments. But yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see. It's like everybody want to call me right now. But yeah, everybody want to call me. It's like it, it seems like every time I get on here, somebody want to call me right then. Phone dry the whole the rest of the day. The phone dry. As soon as I jump on this video, boy. But yeah. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, you know what's always interesting is who comes out of nowhere. That 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 player that 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 kind of comes up out of nowhere and surprises you. I similar to Samaj kind of came out of nowhere this year. Was a surprise, you know. Tyler Morris kind of surprised us a little bit. He came uh, a little bit, I guess. Keon, Keon Sab, Sab. He kind of surprised. I guess you could say. I guess he was the next man up, kind of. I didn't know it was going to be him or Zeke Berry to flourish at that safety spot. I didn't know who it was going to be. It turned out to be Keon Sab, you know. I was listening to Minister Sports, Zach, Zach's, uh, what do you say? Oh, Michigan play, Michigan trying to, uh, fans trying to, trying to act like Keon Sab. Man, that dude was a starter. That man, that dude's a stud, man. You, you downplayed him at first. <laughs> I downplayed him at first, but man, that guy's a stud. Like, yeah, nobody said he wasn't a stud. The thing is, Michigan already... Michigan's other starting safeties, they didn't leave. Makari Page and Rod Moore came back. And Quinn Johnson came back. So it's not a huge loss for Michigan. At least this year. Maybe maybe in 2025, it might be a loss because Keon probably would still been there. But as far as 2024, it's not a big loss when you got three other safeties and who knows how good Zeke Barry's going to be this year. So it's not that big of a loss to us. Yeah, it was a loss because he started some games and his upside, but when you got three other dudes that are veterans plus a young dude in Zeke who might be ready to shine, it's not that big of a loss. Yeah, Cornelius has big time upside. Uh, Ryan Day coaching the running backs at OSU until they find a coach. I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, because what did he say? He tried to devalue. Uh, he tried to devalue the coach, Alfred. And now he's a, this is the best running back room in the country. <laughs> well, which one is it? You, you said he wasn't doing that good. Now they the best running back room in the country. Which one is it, Mr. Day? Which one is it? Now, I appreciate that. It's your first time in the live. But yeah, you know. Season's getting closer. Season's getting closer. You know, it's time to iron the kinks out. Because this, this year is different from other years. And I said this before. We actually got a test this year early. That Texas game is going to be a test. We actually got an early test this year. The last few years, when we just been killing everybody... We ain't had no test till about mid-season or something. We, you know, our out of conference, our first first four or five weeks were cupcakes. You know, we could try different things, got different dudes out there. You know, hey, one nothing to worry about this year. Hey, you guys to get it. You guys to get it up and going because 
you got that you got Texas coming. So you got this year is a little bit different. Well, I think the evaluation and even with that, you could evaluate stuff. You could evaluate stuff during the year. You know what I'm saying? Two years ago, Cade, Cade and JJ were battling it out the first three games. You know what I'm saying? So you had that evaluation. You, you had, we went into the season still evaluating players because you, 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 you knew you were that good. God, stop texting. Yeah. This doggone group text for work is out of line. But yeah, you know, you're, you're, uh, the, the team was so stacked and loaded, they could evaluate players and still blow out team. <laughs> they, they was using, Harbaugh was using those cupcakes as preseason games and evaluating players and the quarterbacks. You ain't got that luxury this year. You really ain't got that luxury. Cause you're gonna you're gonna wanna pick that start have that starter ready and those starters ready for whatever position for the most part. Have them ready and locked in for when you go into Texas. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna wanna find out a little bit more about that quarterback or whoever it is. Before you before you play Texas, you know what I'm saying. So that's that's big right there. So it's gonna be a little bit different going into the year. You ain't got time to be playing no games. Hold on, y'all. But yeah, you ain't got time to be playing around this year. Wait, we the cheaters? I appreciate it, bro. But yeah, there ain't no time to play around here. You got to, hey, you got to have it ready and have them dudes locked in and ready to go. Because if you don't, you don't want to get embarrassed or nothing. Not to say what we would, but you know what I'm saying. You don't want to, you don't want to come out and and have a stinker your first big game your first big game new quarterback you know first time this is your team now so I'm sure Sharon's gonna probably turn up the heat on these dudes uh, way more than Harbaugh probably ever has going into the season those weeks before the season in fall camp he probably gonna turn up the heat I think the I think the energy and the intensity is going to be a little different because it has to be. It has to be this year, you know, especially with so many people ready for Michigan to fall back to pre-COVID, you know. They ready for Michigan to lose. Man, soon as you guys won't be so cocky after Texas, after week two or three, whenever that. I, I'm not sure if it's week two or three. You guys won't be so cocky after that. You guys gonna be humbled after that, after Texas comes to town. Yeah. <laughs> you know them Ohio State fans, they can't wait. Our defense that might have errors on the run. If we can run on Texas, watch out. The reality of losing all those seniors really hit home for the first time. Just my vibe. Dude, you still wear a Bluetooth? Yes! Yeah, I still wear a Bluetooth, bro. This is these are ear This isn't a Bluetooth. I mean, I guess AirPods and all that stuff, those those are Bluetooth. This these are I'm cheap and I don't have an iPhone, bro. Well, I have an iPhone, but I'm cheap. I'm not I'm not paying $150 for no for no earbuds I just don't do that type of stuff you know what I'm saying I got so many I work I work all day for the most part so I'm listening to podcasts all day I'm listening to podcasts I might do my own podcast all day that's what I'm doing so I got earbuds I got so many earbuds bro 
In my other car, I got a set of earbuds. In the house, I got three, four sets of earbuds. Twenty dollars. I'm cheap, bro. I'm not paying no hundred and fifty dollars for no Samsung, Samsung Galaxy buds and all that type of stuff and iPhone AirPods and all that stuff. No, I'm too cheap for that stuff, bro. I tried to Ligma last week. Please pray for me. Prayers out to uh, Philip. <laughs> he said, you still wear a Bluetooth. <laughs> It ain't the old Bluetooth, bro. It's just, <laughs> it ain't the old Bluetooth with the old man. Dude. What you say now, Chuck? What you say? <laughs> but yeah, I'm cheap. I'm cheap, so I'm not going to pay for, you know, unless my girl or somebody, I let her spend her money, uh, family members, me, myself. I go get them $20 ones. I get the 20, 20 bucks. Cause you gonna lose one, you gonna lose one of them. Or they just stop working, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, them AirPods. <laughs> hey yeah, Mr. Krabs, you right about that. I'm cheap like Mr. Krabs too. But my bank account, hey, when you be cheap like when you're cheap like that. For years and years, and you you slowly making more money every year, and you don't pay attention to it. Before you look, you be look at your bank account. You be like, "Hmm, maybe I can buy a new couch now. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe I can buy a new couch now. It's been about six years. That just busted up. Now it's time to get a new couch. But I've been stacking for my, <laughs> I've been stacking for about six years. Like I ain't even noticed." <laughs> maybe it is time to go get some new shoes and stuff now yeah i think it, yeah so you know oh no i ain't tripping bro you know i could you know i'm i always come off aggressive you know but that's just that's just how i react to stuff a lot of the times you know for good or bad, you know, I don't know. Hey, everybody hates Chris. Yeah, that's, I'm not that bad, but <laughs> I'm not that bad. But you, I almost, I almost was that bad for a while, bro. Like I was making money and still wasn't spending it. Just bare minimum, bare minimum, year after year after year. And like, what made me, what made me realize, like. Okay, you maybe maybe you 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 don't got you too cheap for how much money you done st saved up. Like, I live in apartments, so I didn't have a washer and dryer. <laughs> I didn't have a washer and dryer, so I bought one. No, nah, my homeboy, he's kind of struggling a little bit. You, know, you whatever, whatever, and he said he went and bought a washer and dryer, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like. This dude done bought a washer and dryer, and I know I know I got I know I done stacked up a nice amount of money, like where it's really nothing to me. And I, I just thought to myself, like, bro, go buy a washer and dryer. Like, why are you still going to the laundromat when you know you can go buy it and it's not gonna hurt you at not one bit to go buy a new one? Like, not even use. I'm buying a used one knowing I can just go buy a new one. Like I was that cheap. But it was a mentality thing. You know what I'm saying? Everything is mentality. You can take that for life, football, whatever you want to. It's all about your mentality. You know? I had to kind of come out of that because... <laughs> because I was just doing... Like, bro, like, you can spend some of this money. <laughs> like... <laughs> That and that's what I call it, that grind mode, bro. You know what I'm saying? That it's just a mentality, you know. But that's why I always usually have money because I stack it up for so long and then I don't be wanting to spend it. You know, but it's all about mentality. You can take that into football. 
like always working. I always want to work. I always want to work. I always want to grind. Like when I started back playing football and I knew I had took so much time off, I was I was at, at practice, I'm trying to outwork everybody because I felt like I needed to. I need to outwork him. I need to be first in sprints. I need to be first in drills. I need to do all this stuff. When I come home, I got to go work out twice a day. I'm doing two a days on my own. I got to do I got to do footwork drills in the morning. I got to make I got to do footwork drills, eat right on my own. This is all on my own. I got to get my balanced meal, my footwork drills in. I got to go work out on my own, then go to practice. This is still while going to work. Then I get out of practice. I still might go work out again and I still might go do more footwork drills because I feel like I need to outwork everybody else because I've I took that time off. So I feel like I got to outwork you. That's how, that's how I felt. But that's but when I did that, that's how I got results. The same way with my personal life. I feel like I need to outwork you. You go to one job, I'm going to two. I might go to three. So I don't have to ask anybody for anything. If I want to buy this, I can buy it. If I want to do that, I can do it. I feel like I have to outwork you. But that's the mentality thing. And that's the mentality you need to be successful. That's, that's, a, that's a Kobe Jordan type mentality. I'm going to outwork you. No matter if we talk about at work, it don't matter if we talking about on the hard work, on the hardwood. I'm finna outwork you. You know what I'm saying? So I like I like the mentality. Those that's the that's the type of stuff I'm on. But uh the team, somebody was saying, uh <laughs> I mean the first practice ain't gonna be lights out. You know what I'm saying? Because you but I do get what you're saying with the, it seemed a little, a little light. I mean, it's, it is the first practice and you got a ton of new dudes. You know what I'm saying? When you just got, got a bunch of new dudes, they don't even know how to do some of the drills probably. You know, those new dudes, they don't even know how to do, do some of those drills. Like when somebody, let's say we're at practice, somebody's just trying to come up and do a drill. They're going to say Somebody, somebody come up and show me the drill and you, you're a freshman and you run up just to, just to be up there. Just to be up there and like you can walk through it. They're going to say, go, get out of here. You don't even know how to do the drill. I need somebody that knows how to do the drill and knows how to do it fast so they can show us how to do it right. If you don't know how to do it, they're going to say, don't get up here. Don't come up here. Donovan, come up here and show everybody how to do do the drill. Because they know Donovan going to know how to do it and do it right. You know what I'm saying? So, that first practice, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little light. You know what I'm saying? Especially with these type of athletes you got, bro. These, these Them dudes are some real... College athletes, especially like football and basketball, those are like the top one what two percent of humans in the in the world type of stuff you know what i'm saying like they're that's the cream of the crop you know especially at a place like michigan those power five schools those athletes those are those dudes are the cream of the crop of you know kind of genetics type of things you know we look at those dudes and we take it for granted but you got to understand just like let's like the NBA. Those to me, NBA players are giants. They're giants to me. You know what I'm saying? The average, the average man in the world, the average height of a, a man in the world is like five seven. In the US it's five nine. But in the world it's like five seven. We see Steph Curry, we see Steph Curry playing basketball and he looks small. And then you see him do the interview with a with a woman or somebody, and he looks like a giant. He's six three. Steph Curry is six three. And then you might have uh, Giannis, Giannis or whatever. Giannis, dude is like seven foot. That dude is a giant. That's a giant to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, them dudes is freaks of nature. 
those offense, especially like those offensive linemen and those those DNs and D tackles, that big, that fast can move like that. Like Alex Orgy, are you kidding me? Like those dudes are the top of the genetic genetic food chain in the world. You know what I'm saying? I guess we take it for granted because we watch so much football and basketball and all that stuff, but those dudes genetically are the cream of the crop. For real. Hey, I'm always getting tr trolls in here, bro. Let me let me get some. But yeah, that's about all I got. It's always I'm always getting somebody type of troll. I'm always getting some type of troll, and I don't know where I don't know if they Ohio State fans or it's just randoms that's coming and they they try to say some crazy stuff. You know, it's funny to me. And I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna get off of here. It's it's still funny to me that <laughs> that people try to come on here and try to say like racist stuff, like African or something. Like like that's supposed to bother somebody in 2024. <laughs> like like come <laughs> like come on, do better. If you want to talk trash, come with something better than that. Cause that, that ain't even good enough for me to roast you. That's just that's just that's just such a basic thought that it, it ain't even worth the energy to really reply at it. Cause you know I love to to go back and forth with people and, and really cook somebody. That ain't even worth me me getting up, getting getting ready to cook you. You know what I'm saying? Like come come on, come with something better. You know what I'm saying? Bro, bro, earlier talking about my Bluetooth. That's better than you trying to say some some racist or something. That's better than that. You know what I'm saying? But he he, he ain't even mean nothing by that or whatever. You know. 